everybody. So this is number seven, and I'm gonna tell you there's a lot that's happened. Um, I have a couple of videos I started to make about it, and um, I wanted to also make a video about the mask, but I'm also realizing that um, really what um, I want to continue to do is, see, I am not, um, I don't have any uh, strong one-way opinions on what's going on about these things and my real intent is to stay non-polarized polarized about them and everything in me is just dying i'm just chomping at the bit to talk about them and yet what i'm going to do is stay focused and continue on this story because it's about music and music really is what uh, has kept me together <laughs> throughout this lifetime uh, which is what music therapy is, I learned later. Where we left off, this is episode number seven. It was this, uh, after this little toy piano. But what I learned, um, when I was uh, studying music um, and finished my uh, bachelor's degree, which was in jazz vocal performance, and I was nearing the end of it, um, I knew I needed and wanted to uh, continue on with uh, graduate study. And uh, they didn't have a uh, department for that uh, at the school where I was at, so I knew I was gonna have to audition in other places, and I was very, very anxious about that. And I had other issues going on uh, that were quite pressing and very stressful. And I was uh, grossly, morbidly obese. Uh, health issues were cropping up. Um, but I want to stay with this music thing. So, and um, originally, I had had a lot of interest in the field of music therapy. So there was a, a really good department at uh, NYU, and so I went there. I was always uh, did a lot of investigative work <laughs> before I uh, applied at any school um, because I didn't want to waste my time. So. Uh, I went and it turned out that it was uh, break time and so the head of the department there named Benedict Skybee uh, was available to have, and she had time to talk to me and showed me this uh, film of, uh, gosh what was her name, Mary Priestley, I can't believe I remembered it. And Mary Priestley is kind of known as the pioneer of what's called psychoanalytical uh, music therapy. And getting to the point here, which is that music carried me simple, see, but there's a important theory behind it, I think, which is that music is the healthiest part of us. Um, but it's kind of funny, because she shows me this film, right, uh, of Mary Priestley's early work. And it's this uh, film of, like, really whacked out, psychotic people. Uh, it's incredibly dramatic case histories and put a musical instrument in front of them and you know it's like they become different people and the documentary doesn't say that and uh, even after our interview I'm telling you it took me a while to get the point of it that was the point the point is that that's the healthiest part of it that music is so powerful um, and so that the theory behind the, this this is that if you go to that, if you go to the healthiest part of someone, why not start with that, you know? Um, see, Freudian-based psychology is very different premise of how to work with someone. Uh, behavioral psychology has a very different premise upon which you work. So, um, anyway, uh, music, it did turn out, uh, was that way for me, so that when I began to uh, study with real professionals, with real musicians. Um, things in my whole life began to uh, change for me because when um, I found good music teachers who were there with me finally at the end of this long journey, which I haven't told you about yet, <laughs> uh, and sat at the piano and would hit the wrong note hit the wrong note, see I was doing something wrong, then, um, and not everybody analyzes it like this, I'm taking something, you know, laying it upside along how to apply it to uh, other things, 
psyche. Um, and, and I did this after the fact, you know, as I started to see it having an effect on my life. Meaning like, I, so anyway, I need to finish that thought. I would hit the wrong note, you know, and, and, and like, that's how I would learn to play the song. The wrong note. It doesn't sound good. It doesn't feel good hitting the wrong note on the piano. And that was very different for me than singing. See, I had a very different experience with singing. Singing was easy for me. You know, I had to challenge myself with it. With this piano thing. Plus, I wanted to know how it worked, how music worked for the songwriter in me. And now I was a jazz singer, which means more a composer on the spot. It was everything. All right there. I really was all there. I Really, when you talk about narcissism, narcissism is a search for the self because, see, you're not really there. But as this thing connected in me musically, I, that was me. I was really there. I was all in. <laughs> I was all in for it here. And what I started to notice, although it took years, it's taken years for me to notice, that that healthy part of me, it started to come out in life. You know, hey, I started to notice, hey, you know, it kind of feels good to do the right thing. I remember teachers saying to me, hey, that kind of feels good to play the right note, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> it felt so so good. I would I use that when I teach. When I was teaching, I'd say that to kids. Yeah, it feels good, doesn't it? <laughs> the right note there. <laughs> Why don't you try that more often? <laughs> like that. So, and, and that's interesting phenomena to me. Um, so, there I was with this little broken toy piano and the liars. Uh, although, you know, this has gone seven minutes. Maybe this is enough for uh, episode number, number seven. See you next time.